Hi guys, Dominic Vivolo with the Mentor Fire Department. Um, today we're going to go over a brief video on the usage and explanation basically of the body armor that our department has purchased uh, for our protection. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just explain to you the vest itself, what it is, and um, what we, we ended up going with. So this is the AR-500 body armor. Um, we'll go over a couple of extras that um, the chief had wanted on them. First thing we have here is a Smith & Wesson flashlight. This one just happens to have a few uh, different modes. It's got the bright white LED. It also has a red, a blue, and a green light. Okay, so the next thing you see we have is a knife. Um, it's not a very large knife, but we don't have a whole lot of space on here to mount it. Chief wanted us to have some sort of protection as a last resort, so we have a knife that's situated right here. It's just a quick pull out and it clips back in. So we have easily identifiable markings, um, men are fire on the front and on the back. And then a quick easy way to determine the front from back is this strap here, this grab strap if um, someone needed to grab you. There's a nice grab handle that's sewn in there. Grab the whole vest by and drag someone if you needed to. I have it all apart so that you guys can see it out of the holder and out of the plate carrier. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put it in. Um, and this is how it's going to be on the engines. So the body side goes to the body side. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this front one again is curved, so it goes. It's a little form, better form fit over the the chest, so um, it's easier to work with. And this just slides in to this pouch. Now, the tricky thing, and this, this actually got a couple guys already, so I'm going to explain this if you can get this close. This flap where the front and, and rear armor plates go has this Velcro strap and it goes up and seals against there. This other, this other front piece, this front cover, has this tab and this is the key is when you're, when you're opening it to put the vest on, and we'll cover this again, but I just wanted to point out while we're here, this tab is what you want to grab and not this one, because when you, if, if this was, if we're, we were putting it on and you grab this tab, this would obviously slide right out and don't want it to fall on anybody's feet. So I wanted to point that out, that the tab that you grab in order to put the vest on is the one that has this extra piece of webbing and that's what you're going to grab and that will release the cummerbund or give you access to the cummerbund and then you can go ahead and put it on from there. So then the rear plate is the same as the front. Make sure you have the body side that's going against the body and this just slides in and this is a flat plate for the back as opposed to the curved plate for the front. Okay, and then the six by eight side plate just sits in that pouch. Okay, so now we're gonna demonstrate how to put on the body armor. If only I had a lovely assistant to help me. Steve? Yeah, there, there you are. are. Okay, so the, the key with it is to first reveal the cummerbund. That's the first thing we're going to do is open that first strap with the webbing. We're going to open that up, it exposes the cummerbund, and you can open both sides of it. There's also on each side a D clip. You can unhinge both for one side and then just I'll get him in the head, put it over his head. It's, it, it can be done, obviously, with one person putting it on. Um, ideally, two is better, just to help snug everything and cinch everything down. So once you got it over your head, you can clip both uh, of the clasps, and then 
you can cinch those down to where they're comfortable and then bring the cummerbund around the front. Bring one side over. And these are fully adjustable as well, and I'll, I'll show that. Bring them to where they, they meet and where it's a comfortable fit for you, and then just, you can show, just tuck in it, tuck that part right up underneath. As you can see, it sits, it's sitting pretty good on the chest. It should be right above your sternum in the front. If he turns around, you see it's kind of hanging low in the back. This is what we don't want. So you're going to have to cinch this up to get it to ride up a little higher on the back. Slightly higher in the back than the front is ideal. The way to do that is with these straps here. Make sure the pads, these are adjustable right over your shoulders and you can pull it up in the front. You can cinch up the other side and then this is a, like a little keeper. You can just tuck it underneath so you have the excess. It slides right in underneath this first one. Just to pull it through just to kind of dress it up a little bit and then if you fold it once you can tuck it in. There's another little pouch on the top there you, you can tuck it in and it gives it a little cleaner look and while he's standing sideways you can see that we've cinched up to the appropriate position and where it should ride. Um, the other thing to note is the, with the radio pouch, our radios, like I said before, will fit right in. And fit right in there and you can either run it straight across and hook it into the molly or you can run it behind and hook it in, whatever your preference is, and then your radio is good to go. Um, you shouldn't have a whole lot of gap in between on the sides. It should fit snug to your body. Um, these uh, side pouches are going to feel like they're going to flop a little bit, but that's just how they're mounted with these uh, straps. The other thing to point is that these, uh, all these plates are angle cut, and the reason for that is to, if you bring your arms across or you're working, it gives you a little bit more dexterity. Okay, just to quickly review the adjustments. Again, we have two shoulder straps where it can be adjusted. We have the two side straps, one on each side, where you can snug that in. And then the only other adjustment for larger individuals is the cummerbund itself. You can pull that out. The final adjustment is a little bit more in involved with this uh, stretch rope. You can loosen this up, pull it out a little bit more, it'll get around you, and then you can, you know, you can get it set to where you want it. Throw a quick knot back in, and then put it back in the back of the cummerbund. And then you can wrap it around where it needs to go. When we're putting it away, if you would, if you just put it back together so that everything is clasped, and it's ready to go and then you can just put it back in its position on your engine. Okay just to clear up a couple questions that have already come up the first one being are we going to get any more sets of body armor? The answer is not right now. Um, we have 11 total in the city there's two on each engine and one on 1150. We also have to go with this body armor uh, two Delta IV style helmets that are also kept on 1150. Another question that came up is will there be an SOP on when to wear them? The answer is no. Chief wants us to use these at our discretion. Whenever we feel that a situation or a call may deem it, go ahead and put them on. For larger scale incidents, we're going to be utilizing this body armor in a warm zone setting, not in a hot zone. And then the third question that came up is uh, why are they on the engine? Who's supposed to wear them? Why aren't they on the squads? The reason being is because simply the engines are in the city more often times than the squads are and it's basically up to two guys at your station, whatever the call is, whoever is put in that role to, to wear them. It doesn't have to be the engine guys because they're on the engine. It could be the squad guys, engine guys, ladder guys, whoever. Okay guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or concerns about the body armor, just give me a call, text me, send me an email. I'd be glad to answer anything. I also would refer you to ar500armor.com. You can check out their website and you could see some of the ballistic videos that they have. I think they're also on YouTube of them shooting different 
caliber rounds into the body armor that we have um, and you can see how it reacts. Other than that, get it out of the engines, train with it, use it, get comfortable with it, and be safe. Thank you.